महान सर हेलो महान सर एम ऑडिबल हेलो या मानसर ऑडिबल गो थैंक यू गुड मॉर्निंग टू वन एंड ऑल प्रेजेंट हियर माई सेल्फ महांत जी कटिमनी असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर फ्रॉम इलेक्ट्रिकल एंड इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स डिपार्टमेंट आई वेलकम यू ऑल फॉर द थर्ड डे सेशन ऑन फाइव डेज इंटरनेशनल virtual fdp on education and research experiences abroad dear participants please note there is some change in the program agenda today's sessions will be handled by mr ajit basrur on research at german universities i welcome you sir um yeah. thank you professor mahant kattivani for introducing yeah uh, uh, it's my i'll it's my privilege to introduce mr ajit basrur mr ajit basrur has completed his bachelor's in electronics and communication engineering from basveshwara engineering college bagalkot in the year 2006 after that he has joined as senior embedded software engineer at etm systems private limited he has worked there for around 6 years after that he has joined robot bash india where he has worked as technical specialist embedded followed by he completed his masters in sensor system technology from harshule karshu technik and workshop germany presently he is a research research associate at kalshoe institute of technology germany he is having a wide experience in the industry and his experiences are c c++ java programming concepts and in the tools like matlab qt eclipse and uh, visual studio uh, his field of interest are consumer electronics robotics and medical uh, i request all the participants uh, to mute and uh, please listen to his uh, session and take the benefit of this uh, over to you sir uh, once again i welcome you ajit basru sir thank you professor mahant kattimani for introducing me so yeah um, i am ajit basru i currently work as a researcher at kalshro institute of technology my main research interest are in the field of control systems and robotics and my main work deals with uh, this uh, right now with the electrical motors then the fusion estimations then the sensor fusion technologies and so and and i i really thank mr santosh kandigal for giving me an opportunity to talk about this research at german universities today at your symposium and um 
first thing i would like to ask everyone um, if you don't understand anything please uh, raise your hand and you could interrupt me and ask me question at during the session itself i will try to answer as much as possible if not you can hold your questions we can discuss in an elaborate way at the end of this session so i would expect uh, you to ask questions so that it will help to get clarifications and the other thing is um, um i hope everyone understands here english and kannada right yes sir yeah yeah okay so yeah in in case you could ask questions in any language should be fine with me okay so let me start and um, why why i chose germany to give an introduction about research at germany as we all know germany is an economic powerhouse of europe it is the fourth largest country by nominal gdp it has maximum number of companies and it has a wide trade across with china and usa and this country according to its size has achieved more than according to its size it's a leader in automobile industry there are companies like mercedes benz bmw volkswagen audi and all such big companies that are located out of this country germany is the first country in the world to introduce this healthcare systems like the the ashishwini um, yojana we have in karnataka but uh, such a system has been built by germany a century ago and they are the pioneer in health insurance system and of course uh, they are known for autobahns they are kind of freeways or highways where there is no speed limit we can we could drive more than 200 km per hour so this is the map of germany and this is the map of karnataka as you can see the country like germany is not so much bigger than the karnataka i would say they are almost equivalent in size it's slightly it's bigger than the state of karnataka let's let's compare the karnataka and germany the population in our state karnataka is 64 million whereas the population in germany is 83 million and if you look at the area wise like i said germany is slightly bigger than the karnataka then comparing the gdp the gross domestic product output germany is 390 in tens of billion that is 39 trillions whereas karnataka is in 2.2 uh, 0.22 trillions and let's look at the number of universities germany has germany has total 426 universities whereas in karnataka we have 50 universities the question is why has germany achieved so much despite the size being not its limitation and the country which has survived two world wars and still an economic powerhouse in europe the question is what is the reason behind germany achieving so much i could come across with these three points germany has given an emphasis on education they have a very well developed university system and the cooperation between the universities and industries are quite close the education system, system is quite well known in germany and you can see compared to its size it has maximum number of universities there are number of industries are hit there in germany and they always work closely with the university any any research and development they do they will consider professors or the students from the university and they work on a product and they make the product out in the market so this is the typical education system in germany as you can see the they start with the uh, early education system from age 3 to 6 which they call it as kindergarten and in this stage the children will not learn about reading or writing they focus more on outdoor playing they will be focusing more on logical build up they get to do artistic things paintings they get to 
play a lot outdoor. There is no concept of reading or writing, learning during the kindergarten age. Then there's the primary school similar to our Indian education system where the focus will be mainly on mathematics and languages. They will learn the language German and mathematics in the primary school between the age of six to ten. They also have the option to learn an additional language like in India, French or English, but mostly they'll focus on German and mathematics. <coughs> then after the primary school, they segregate the education system into three different routes. The first one is gymnasium. The second one is real Schule. The, th the third one is Hauptschule. In the gymnasium, those students who are pretty good at mathematics and languages, they get an entry into the gymnasium where they will complete the abitur like our PUC and get into the university system. Those students who are who don't like mathematics or the arts so much or the language so much, they still have an option to learn or acquire job skills, what they call pre-vocational schools. So they will enter into the Hauptschule system where they'll be having pre-vocational skills learned and they can either leave the school with those certificates or they can choose to learn further, higher um, vocational skills like plumbing, nursing, any, any kind of skills which doesn't require too much theoretical knowledge. So they can acquire these job skills and they can still get into the job market. And <clears throat> the third option is real Shula, where students still haven't developed the required skills to understand the mathematics or the languages. They will be studying in this real Shula. They can get to choose gymnasium or the Hop Shula at the end of the school living. And then comes the The vocational training, like I said, this vocational training is quite important here in Germany. The idea is they want to employ everyone. That is the concept here. So those those pupils or the school students who doesn't want to spend too much time reading inside the rooms, but want to explore by trying out by themselves, they can get into these vocational schools. Then there is a concept of university here. They have these two concepts here. In detail, I will explain in the next slides. University and University of Applied Sciences. The university is similar to our technical universities or the general universities and the University of Applied Sciences is um, similar to our polytechnical universities. They get a chance to do bachelor's, master's and only in the university one can earn doctoral degrees. So this is the type of higher education in Germany. They have university concept. They have applied sciences concept and they have colleges of art, film and music. I will initially focus on these two uh, systems. Let's start with applied sciences. Like I said before, applied sciences is similar to the polytechnic university where the focus will be on learning the theoretical things, but in the direction of final job. They what are the, the job in the industries demand the subjects will be tailored according to the industry needs in these applied sciences. <clears throat> then there is a concept of dual studies here, where student will spend half a time at the university, half a time at the industry. So they get a chance to experience both theoretical knowledge as well as learn the practical things. So this is one concept I find it pretty good here in Germany. Then the university system, there are three different types of universities are here. They are general university, like similar to our Mysore University or Kuwaipo University, which offer all kinds of degrees. Then there are technical universities like uh, VTU, where the focus will be mainly on engineering and natural sciences. Then there's the College of Education. In the College of Education, they will be focusing mainly on training the teachers to become like a similar to BA or something. Then coming back to the technical university, like I said, I will focus on this technical university. They 
their main streams are this engineering and natural sciences and there are many technical universities in germany which are oriented towards this engineering skills and natural sciences skills there are more than 50 technical universities but out of these 50 technical universities they have formed a collaboration of nine technical universities they call it tu9 their focus is to collaborate with each other to attract more funding and to attract the international students the idea is this is similar to the ivy league they have formed in usa where it's such a collaboration they can attract more funding and more students so these are the nine universities i have listed here i i work as a research associate at karlsruhe institute of technology then coming back to the how the students learn at technical universities this is a uh, very important to understand how the research is conducted because the students acquire skills research skills based on the curriculum at the technical universities so let's i will talk about four points the streams the courses the special courses and bachelor master thesis here the students have the option to combine different subjects students can choose mathematics and philosophy or the electrical and computer science or the electrical and the biotechnology so they get to choose two entirely different technologies during the bachelor's or master studies this is quite important a student can have a diverse interest a varied interest and it's important that his needs are met that's the reason the options are highly flexible and student can choose what kind of courses he wants hello yeah uh, no problem you can go ahead this can I continue? Yeah, please, please. Okay, I can hear some background. Yeah, now it is uh, sorted out. <clears throat> okay. Then there are courses here. And the important thing is the most of the courses are electives here. The courses, the students can choose what kind of courses he wants, what kind of electives he wants. And the idea is, again, this is as much as made flexible so that students can choose the courses they like, they want. It might be that, um, like when I was in engineering, uh, yeah. we learned this basic electronics. And this is one of the toughest subjects, I would say. And uh, all the sub students might not be interested in learning this subject. The important thing is they can opt out if they don't like the subject. So this is quite important. Then even though the student has been enrolled to, let's say, mathematics and philosophy department, but he can still still choose the subjects from other streams like electrical and computer science. And the third important point is the courses. They're purely decided by the professors. The professors, they work they do research on the individual topics and most most important they offer the courses from their research topic this is quite important because the students will have varied number of questions and he wants to understand in depth then if the professor can't answer these questions then it's it's of no use for students to learn that's why the professors whenever they teach something they would have have experience in those subjects so so professors decide the courses and the students can ask any kind of questions and the professors are in a set to answer the questions posed by the students. Then other important things are there are special courses here at the technical universities. They are literature research and internship at labs. This literature research is quite important. Whenever some student or someone wants to work in the research field it's important that they understand the state of the art methods in the existing research and he can only learn or she can only learn by doing the literature research 
they can look through IEEE papers, SPIE papers, or the Springer Verlag uh, papers. They can look through different papers. They can understand the state of the art methods, and they can ma make a report. Because if we don't know the current state of the arts, then we cannot make new contributions to the existing research. So this is quite an important course, I would say. So then, then there are internship at labs here. This internship at labs is quite important. Um, generally, we do internship at the industries where it's purely practical. When internships are done at the labs, it's mainly related to acquiring the research skills. Student would have learned so many mathematical concepts, theoretical concepts, and he doesn't have an idea or she doesn't have an idea how to apply those th theoretical concepts to the actual application. For example, how do we use the integrator? How do we use the derivative? How they're ap applied in the control systems? How they're used to control the, the speed of the car, the acceleration of the car? These are the concepts students would, would have learned theoretically, but if they can get a hands on, they can do internship at the labs, then they can bridge the gap between the theoretical skills and the practical skills. Then there are bachelor and master thesis concepts where this is similar to a bachelor projects and master projects at the final semester of our studies. Here they focus mainly on the research aspect. They don't want to do entirely programming or something. So the idea is do the literature research, understand the, the research topic, then come up with your own idea or professor can also assign a research topic here and our students can decide themselves whether they want to take it or not. Then they have to focus on a research topic and they have to work on that topic for three months or six months, depending on the curriculum. And they have to finish their final bachelor or master thesis. Generally, the students are expected to publish a paper during this thesis time or the end of the thesis time because this will add contribution to the uh, community. This will increase the value of the university and it'll get a chance to the students have done the real research in their field. <clears throat> and this is the general structure at the universities here. They have this faculty like mathematical, mathematical faculty, the electrical faculty or the philosophical faculty and each faculty have different research groups or departments different departments and this each department will have a different technical chairs or labs i would call uh, this is quite important because each technical chair or lab will be headed by one professor or set of professors they will be working closely on a one single topic and they will be heading a technical chair. Under each technical chair or lab, there will be doctorates and postdocs. They will be working with the professors and they will be working under a department and faculty. The important thing is um, any professor is completely responsible for this technical chair or the lab and they can get funding from the university, they can fund, get funding from the industry and they can collaborate with doctorates and postdocs to apply research onto the real industrial problems or they can tackle pure basic science research. And this is the typical scenario of the research society scenario in Germany. They have this public funding and private funding and they work on the basic research and applied research. So the, as you can see, there are so many different res research societies are there in Germany. I will be focusing on only these three societies because I have some couple of interactions with these societies or I have partly worked there. The first one is the Fraunhofer Society. This Fraunhofer Society, they generally get, as you can see their location in this map, they get generally the funding from the private or the industry and they work on the applied research. And there is an Helmholtz Society. They get funding mostly from public, like taxpayers' money, and they work on basic research also a little bit on the applied research. They partly overlap their research. Then there is a Max Planck Society. They completely get money from the public. They completely work on the basic research. 
So this is the ecosystem uh, for research collaboration at Germany. Let's say we have these three societies mentioned, this Fraunhofer Society, this Helmholtz Society, and Max Planck Society. Like I said, Fraunhofer works on applied research, Helmholtz on the basic and applied research, and Max Planck purely on the basic research, that is natural sciences. All these societies work in close cooperation with the universities and in close cooperation with the industries. And apart from that, universities, they also interact with industry. As you can see, university plays a central role or a pivotal role in getting the research done at the societies or at the universities and impart it to the industries. So this is quite important to know. So universities play a very key role here. Any society, they're always associated with one or the other universities. For example, where I work here at the Karlsruhe Institute of Technology, there are two Fraunhofer Institutes. One Fraunhofer works on the information systems, and another Fraunhofer works on this military equipment, the research in military equipments. And there's an Helmholtz Society here, which is associated with my university. And this university, uh, this Helmholtz Society, they work mainly on the nuclear reactors and research related to nuclear reactors. Plus, they also work on this applied computer science technologies. And there is no associated Max Planck Society here at my university, but there are at other universities, so which I'll skip here. Let's take a brief look at uh, these three societies here. <coughs> The Fraunhofer Society, in, Gen in Germany, they have total 72 institutes and they have a research budget of 2.8 billion euros. This is quite an astounding amount compared to the size of Germany. And in that society, there are 28,000 scientists and engineers they are working in this Fraunhofer Society. And the most notable invention from this Fraunhofer Society is MP3. I think at one point of time, we would have all came across this MP3 songs. And this MP3 uh, format has been designed in this Pranova Society. Then there is Helmholtz Society, where there are total 18 institutes across Germany. And they have also quite a big amount of budget, which is 4 to 5 billion euros. You see that Nature Journal is one of the reputed journals in international community, or this um, natural science community. And to this journal, they are the seventh largest contributor. The seventh largest contribution comes from Helmholtz Society. Then there is Max Planck Center, so the Max Planck Society. There are in total 35 institutes and they have a budget of 1.8 billion euros. There are 15,000 scientists working here. But most important thing is, can, as you can see here, there are so far 33 Nobel Prizes have come to the German out of which 33 have uh, from the Max Planck Society. They work on the natural sciences, and you can see the quality of work here. 33 Nobel Prize is not a small achievement, I would say. And similar to Helmholtz, they are the third largest paper contributor to Nature Journal. So you can see from these figures, the quality of research they are doing at Germany the, the amount of budget they are getting for the research and the number of people, scientists or engineers working in these societies. To summarize, in Germany, they work closely with uh, research centers and universities, and there are large number of universities and diverse research institutes in Germany. As I said, like there are more than 426 universities in Germany and more than 100 research institutes. They work on basic research as well as applied research. The good thing is they get funding both from the governments as well as industry. This is quite important because if there is no funding, there is no research option. Then other important thing is because of large number of research institutes, large number of universities, after graduation, students get a chance also to establish career in research, not only in engineering like other industries. This is quite important. Then, what can we learn from this German research system? I have made a 
couple of points here may for different audiences let's say for example hello hello can i continue uh participants uh, please uh, uh, mute during the session uh, okay yeah uh, sorry sir you can continue sir yeah sure for students and um, i would recommend allow students to do research at the universities and it's important that most of the students during their studies they might not have so much money to do the research it's important that the labs or the teachers they can get funding from the universities or the industries and they can offer kind of mini jobs to the students like let's say 5000 rupees per month so that they can students can work for 10 hours in a month and or in a week and they can do the research at the universities under labs and under professors and it's important that students get competent research topics to do projects because the what we learn we we learn up to date topics from our study books but it's also important that we are up to date with the current research and we work on those state of the art research topics during the studies also and second thing is for teachers and tutors i highly recommend the tutors and teachers to do research on a regular basis most of the times we confine ourselves to do only the teaching not focusing on the research i i won't say like not everyone does the same thing there are different we have we have also big number of universities in india or in karnataka and some professors they focus on research some professors they focus only on teaching my recommendation would be to do the regular research um, on the topic chosen by the professor and they should establish a goal of publishing at least three papers per year in repeated international conferences and journal this is quite important because if professors or the teachers if they don't do research then they cannot offer research topics to the students and if they have some goals in mind then they can get started going then it's important that the professors or teachers need not to all the research by their own they can hire students or the phd students to do part of their research so that it's more in research is more about collaboration than individual work so it's a team work then it's important that instead of focusing on many research topics professors or teachers should focus on only one research topic for example control systems the power systems or the energy renewable energy using solar cells so they can focus on only one research topic and they can dive, dive deep into these research topics and some recommendations to colleges and universities it's important that the universities should offer more flexibility to tutors and students in selecting the courses because professors they know exactly what they want to teach and it's important that they get flexibility to teach what they want to teach instead of sticking to the general curriculum which will not help anyone the like professors can choose their own curriculum then like i said in one of the earlier slides it's important to offer literature research as a course for the students because students will get, get to understand state of the art research topics then if possible offer kind of a mini thesis for students every semester so that students get a chance to do the literature research work on a research topic and they can contribute to the research community and last but not the least is the collaboration with local industries i'm sure we have a lot of local industries there in every city in karnataka or in india and it's important that we approach these industries and ask for their problems which if they solve their problems and if we try to collaborate with them and get funding from them it's one of the best solutions so you can students will get to do research you will solve the industry problems and industries will benefit from this research and they can innovate do the innovation and they can compete with other industries not only within karnataka or india uh, from the global arena so it's important that we collaborate with the right industries uh, right local industries and 
solve their problems applying by applying research and in the same meantime we get funding this is quite important to collaborate with the industries the government cannot provide funding to all the universities government has so many different focus with so many different goals they can only allocate part of the money to the universities so it's important that universities or the colleges they can generate revenue from their own by collaboration with the industries and and do research uh, that's all from my side any questions and answers i would be glad to take and answer thank you participants uh, you can unmute and ask the questions uh, regarding the uh, topics what sir has covered or else you can put the same thing in the chat box i will uh, read out to the speaker sir in the coming days uh, myself malikarjun sir in the coming days how exactly we can find that this is the research area where it, it, it is a uh, very boom to do how we can uh, identify that and um, generally the research they focus on the current and the future problems for example re renewable energy is the need of the hour um and there has been a lot of research going on this i mean if you just look at uh, this science columns in the any of the newspapers for example this times of india or hindu or any local kannada newspaper like vijavani you will find always the science columns where they will cover different uh, trends in the latest science community so it's important that we understand those topics and we can, then we'll get an idea which which topic we will is in boom for example nanotechnology or the quantum computing we will not be able to do research on these topics but part of this research we can see in which direction we can work i mean once we know which field the people are working the science community is working then we can always we can have access to this ieee or different uh, paper communities and uh, we can check for papers there then we'll get an idea did i answer your question yeah sir thank you sir thank you yeah participants yeah just sir uh, from my side one question is there mm -hmm. uh, as you inform these uh, research institutes like stefan hopper helmans and max planck mm -hmm. uh, uh, whether they work globally or uh, only with respect to german and other things sir uh, it's like uh, Uh, do you have a communication from here also uh, is it possible such kind of things and uh, okay for example from offer their main goal is to solve the industry problems and uh, right now they work closely with uh, the german universities but they have sales office across the globe and as okay. this max planck university max planck society they work closely with iits iits and iisc and they do the research together and uh, helmholtz they they have tie up with american universities and i am not sure if they also have a tie up with the indian universities okay uh, and uh, you mean to say it will not be an open source kind of thing it will be related to and uh, applied to the uh, institutes which like uh, tied up is compulsory tie up is compulsory it will not be an open source uh, uh, funding and uh, research institutes am i right sir and i'm not sure if i understood your question correctly and no, uh, no uh, see uh, suppose i want to uh, opt for some uh, funding so mm -hmm. i just cannot apply directly to either of the universities either of the institutes so Uh, like let's say if you are working in universities right yeah okay generally what happens is um, this uh, this uh, this uh, front of our or helmholtz or uh, this max planck societies they will have departments heads they will okay. be also professors or the owner of technical chairs at the universities 
that means they have positions both in the this uh, re research societies as well as at the universities so that's how they make a link or collaboration that means the professors will uh, whenever he gets a funding he, it will be a collaboration between the two institutes and the funding uh, uh, generally uh, there is a rule in germany that if the funding is entirely from the government then all the work has to be made open source okay. and if it is uh, funding from the private then uh, the industry can decide whether they want to make it public or they want to um, uh, keep it to themselves and the other important thing is um, if if we want let's say you uh, with let's say you are working at the uh, technical university vtu and if you want to have a collaboration with the university in germany it's important that we know someone there and like that's what the, the important thing is if professors attend this international conferences then they can do networking and once they do the networking they'll get to know different professors and once they know the professors then they can work in future and they can do the uh, uh, research in collaborative manner and they can exchange ideas and they can exchange the students so that's an important thing to networking is highly important uh, even in res research community and it's important that the networking is only possible by attending reputed conferences and by publishing there yeah sure yeah uh, thank you sir thank you yeah. participants Uh, Mr. Ajit, uh, uh, I have uh, one question uh, from mm -hmm. uh, SS yeah. uh, uh Is it possible uh, uh, to have a mentor from uh, like uh, what you are uh, uh, working now? Uh, if I would like to take projects here uh, in India, in uh, like uh, our college, if I take uh, project work, uh, can we have a mentor uh, from uh, uh, like uh, uh, your side so that uh, we can have a collaboration and we can uh, do project work and uh, we can uh, submit uh, uh, work there uh, so that we can have a link uh, we can work together is there, is there any such uh, 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 opportunities or uh, 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 if so what are the criteria for uh, that okay and um, generally uh, generally this 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 one is decided for the professors itself and um, since I'm, I just work as a research associate here, I don't hold the position of professor, so I cannot entirely answer this question. But I would uh, give some suggestions to this point. And um, to uh, like, there are two ways. First one is we know some professors here, and we can establish here. Uh, the professors expect high research quality, and if if they know that college or the technical universities then there's a high chance of him or her, the professor accepting the students. The second option is to apply for DAAD scholarship, DART scholarship. This is a scholarship of the German government for the international students. Uh, maybe I'll write down in the chat. And students should apply to this scholarship. Uh, once they apply to this, this scholarship, I mean, this is open to uh, the whole international uh, students association and um, uh, i mean all the uh, countries and all the universities or the, all the colleges and they can uh, apply to this dart scholarship and uh, they can choose the university once they get the scholarship then they can approach the professor directly and they can write him an email him or her an email so this is another way the third option would be to do it in a manner which is, uh, uh, in a sense, we can guide the students there at the local universities. But in a sense, it is not a pure collaboration where it will not be completely access, expect, accepted by the universities because we don't have a formal link to communicate. But students can do the projects under the professors there and we can guide them. I mean, we can, since we will be working on the latest research trends, we can guide the students to on which direction to work so the third option is possible uh, yeah uh, thank you mr ajit definitely uh, we will uh, uh, 
uh, look forward uh, on that and uh, i'll uh, uh, see that uh, even i uh, uh, expect some uh, uh, coordination as well as uh, guidance so that we will have uh, such uh, plan in the future if possible uh, uh, we can have okay yeah definitely yeah. i at I least think, i can yeah i can my my capacity i can do that so yeah yeah definitely definitely participants any more questions we can expect sir, how sir how actually the research in the research we can decide these uh, the theoretical research area and uh, uh, the practically uh, what we can tell it is a, a built in table area how we can differentiate these two in the research side one is just taking uh, theoretical and doing simulation part one more is uh, uh, building the entire uh, uh, model for the execution how we need to judge uh, whether we need to do this or whether we need to do that it it uh, depends on the research topic uh, to which department do you belong sir triple e department electrical <laughs> department Uh, um, so you might be knowing electrical motors, right? Yes. Okay. Let's say, for example, the latest trend in the electrical motors is um, uh, this uh, brushless direct current motors, this BLDC motors. Ah, uh, sir. <clears throat> yeah, and BLDC motors. Uh, do you know the limitations of the BLDC motors at the at this moment? Yes, sir. Yeah. this um, this motors they have um, um, the important thing is they have to be produced using uh, this uh, they generally they have this uh, made up of the stators and uh, rotors and yes. you know the 3d printing technology is applied to manufacture the whole bldc motors so they can make it more lightweight and they can make it more powerful so the idea is um, so you can do simulations uh, about the material properties of the magnets or about the 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 electrical properties of the coils and uh, you can compare the properties of uh, this 3d manufactured with the existing or if you do simulation um, of the bldc motor then you can try buy a real bldc motor and uh, try to apply the latest control technology and see how much it is far from the simulation this is you will get an one idea then if we read through the all the iaa paper then you can see the people are focusing on how to efficiently control this pldc motors so you can do this control system simulation either in matlab or you can implement yourself on using this micro python or different environment so okay sir thank you sir thank you thank you yeah participants your yeah, participants feedback link is provided in the chat box uh, i think no more questions uh, uh, from the participants okay yeah 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 uh, uh, i thank uh, uh, mr rajit basrur uh, for his wonderful session Uh, uh he guided us uh, in all the uh, research possibilities in german uh, he showed us about the education system and the types of higher education uh, the differences uh, how it is different from uh, indian universities like there are, uh, he explained clearly on these things like university college of art film and music and applied sciences three different uh, 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 universities there types of higher education uh, it is uh, really uh, uh, needed and uh, uh, valuable insights for all of us and uh, and uh, the point 
what you raised uh, regarding this uh, dash scholarship it is really helpful for the uh, students as well as the tutors or the faculties uh, th thank you on this also uh, uh, th uh, I once again I thank uh, Mr. Ajit Basrur for his uh, wonderful session, and also I thank uh, the participants. Uh, 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 participants tomorrow will join uh, at uh, ten o'clock. Uh, thank you, Ajit sir. Thank you, Professor Mahant Katimani. Um, thanks for giving when giving me an opportunity to talk about this topic, and um, I hope to get some feedbacks from this. Um, seminar also I, I would like to evaluate myself how good i was and then if if anything in the future comes up you could definitely approach me regarding some research doubts or some collaboration so i could uh, do my best to yeah. accommodate yeah De definitely sir. definitely yeah and uh, regarding that scholarship we need some more insights uh, we will we'll write a mail to you regarding this also uh, to know some more uh, details on these things okay yeah that should be fine. Uh, for participants, uh, any of the uh, slides will be shared to you at the later stage. Uh, thank you, thank you, all of you. Thank you. For participants, feedback link is provided in the chat box. Yeah, those who have given the feedback, they can exit from the uh, meeting session.